Hey guys, and welcome to our fourth episode. Today we will be talking about David and Goliath. Our story starts off in 1 Samuel 17, verses 1 through 11. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle and were assembled at Soko, which belongs to Judah, and they camped between Soko and Zekah in Ephes Damon. Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and they camped in the valley of Elah, and assembled into battle formation to meet the Philistines. The Philistines were standing on the mountain on one side, and Israel was standing on the mountain on the other side with the valley between them. Then a champion came out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he wore a coat of scale armor, overlapping metal plates, which weighed 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had bronze shin protectors on his legs and a bronze javelin hung between his shoulders. The wooden shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam. The blade head of his spear weighed 600 shekels of iron, and his shield bearer walked in front of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the battle lines of Israel, saying to them, Why have you come out to draw up for a battle? Am I not the Philistine, and you are not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and have him come down to fight me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will become your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall become our servants and serve us. Again, the Philistine said, I defy the battle lines of Israel this day. Give me a man so that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. If the Philistines had power over the valley of Elah, they would be able to enter Judah. Goliath was about nine feet and nine inches. He challenged Israel on behalf of the Philistines to make Israel their slaves. Saul was supposed to accept the challenge on behalf of Israel, but instead he was greatly afraid. David in this story was appointed by the Lord, and all the people saw what their God was truly capable of. Now we continue on in verse 12 to 40 to see how this story plays out. Now David was the son of Ephrathite in Bethlehem in Judah, named Jesse, who had eight sons. Jesse was old in the days of Saul, advanced in years among men. His three older sons had followed Saul into battle. The names of his three sons who went to battle were Eliab, the firstborn, next Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest. Now the three oldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's flock at Bethlehem. The Philistine, Goliath, came out morning and evening and took his stand for forty days. Then Jesse said to David, his son, Take for your brothers an ephah of this roasted grain and these ten loaves of your bread and run quickly to the camp to your brothers. Also, take these ten cups of cheese to the commander of the unit. See how your brothers are doing and bring back news of them. Now they are with Saul and all the men of of Israel in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. So David got up early in the morning, left the flock with a keeper, picked up the provisions, and went just as Jesse had directed him. And he came to the encampment as the army was going out in the battle formation, shouting the battle cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up in a battle formation, army against army. Then David left his provisions in the care and supply of the keeper, and ran to the ranks and came and greeted his brothers. As he was talking to them, behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, named Goliath, was coming up from the army of the Philistines, and he spoke these same words again, and David heard him. When the men of Israel all saw the man, they fled from him, and they were very frightened. The men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who is coming up? Surely he is coming to defy Israel. The king will reward the man who kills him with great riches and will give him his daughter in marriage and make his father's house family free from taxes and service in Israel. Then David spoke to the men who were standing by him. What will be done for the man who kills the Philistine and removes the disgrace of his taunting from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that has has taunted and defied the armies of the living God? The men told him, That is what will be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard what he said to the man. And Eliab's anger burned against David. And he said, Why have you come down here? With whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption, overconfidence, and the evil of your heart. 
for you have come down in order to see the battle. But David said, what have I done now? Was it not just a harmless question? Then David turned away from Eliab to someone else and asked them the same question. And the people gave him the same answer as the first time. When the words that David spoke were heard, the men reported them to Saul, and he sent for them. David said to Saul, Let no man's courage fail because of him, Goliath. Your servant will go out and fight this Philistine. Then Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight him, for you are only a young man, and he has been a warrior since his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant was tending his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and took a lamb of the flock, I went out after it and attacked it and rescued the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose up against me, I seized it by its whiskers and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear and the uncircumcised Philistine, who will be like one of them, since he has taunted and defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will rescue me from the hands of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his garments and put on a bronze helmet on his head and put a coat of mail armor on him. Then David fastened his sword over his armor and tried to walk, but he could not, because he was not used to them. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, because I am not used to them. So David took them off. Then he took his shepherd's staff in his hand and chose himself five smooth stones out of a stream bed and put them in his shepherd's bag which he had that is in his shepherd's pouch with his sling in his hand he approached the philistine to david this whole battle was mentally spiritual he had fought off both lions and bears that were common in that time because he called on god when everyone else was scared he was confident that his god would provide for him he was about to show everyone who god was and all that he could do He didn't need all that armor. He needed God. Now we continue on to the rest of the chapter, seeing what David did with this sling and that rock. The Philistine came and approached David and with his shield bare in front of him. When the Philistine looked around and saw David, he derided and disparaged him because he was just a young man with a ruddy complexion and a handsome appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you have come to me with the shepherd's staffs? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine also said to David, Come to me, and I will give the flesh to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This is the day... The Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the corpses of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that this entire assembly may know that the Lord does not save with the sword or with the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will hand you over to us. When the Philistine rose and came forward to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand into his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone penetrated his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and he struck down the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in David's hand. So he ran over to the Philistine, grasped his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their mighty champion was dead, they fled. The men of Israel and Judah stood with a shout and pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance of the valley and the gates of Ekron. And the, fa- f- eh, and the fatality wounded Philistines fell along the way to Sherem, even as far as Gath and Ekron. The sons of Israel returned from their pursuit of the Philistines and plundered their camp. Then David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his weapons in his tent. When Saul saw David going out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the captain of the army, Abner, whose son is this young man? And Abner answered, 
by your life, O king, I do not know. The king said, Ask whose son the young man is. When David returned from killing Goliath the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. Saul asked him, Whose son are you, young man? And David answered, I am the son of your servant Jesse of Bethlehem. In Israel, if you were killed and left for the birds and beasts, it was considered shameful because family and friends could not bury the person or properly mourn. That's why it meant so much when David and Goliath were saying these things to each other. David's victory against Goliath with just a sling, a stone, and no armor leads to Saul's jealousy and later desire to kill him. The courage she displayed goes to show that he was more fit to be king than Saul himself. This does not make Saul happy at all, but that's all for today's episode. I hope that you enjoyed and learned that God will always be on your side, as long as you choose him. Bye!